This video is going to be a film study look at the game ceiling interception that Derek Barnes had in the Lions 31-23 win over the Buccaneers Sunday night. An unbelievable play that I think illustrates how versatile he is when he's lined up as an outside linebacker slash D end. Of course, he's not a, a prototypical pass rusher on third downs, but I think on early downs, and I've been saying this for I think about a month, on early downs, it's probably a good idea to have Derek Barnes out there as the, the third inside linebacker, the Sam, if you will, who can and often does walk up to onto the line of scrimmage um, as the edge defender, be it to the field or to the boundary. He provides versatility in coverage. He provides the ability to, to check in and out of various other coverages. I think he's very good on some of the stunts that they run, uh, filling inside, stunting across, but not necessarily getting to the quarterback, just playing his role as an unselfish football player. It's pretty cool uh, to see him get the game ceiling interception on a day when the the broadcast team and much of the national media appeared to just want to talk about the Bucks and Baker Mayfield. So just one glance at this play, and then I'll review this one a lot more at the end of the video. You see that he drops out from an edge player position because they're bringing two, play, two blitzers from the field. In this case, it's Anzalone and Brian Branch. So you can see that he's dropped out of here. Jalen Reeves-Maben has pushed to the field. It looks like to me Melifonwu's coming downhill and eventually peels back out of here, but we'll cover this a little bit more in depth. Derek Barnes is an inside linebacker, but in a 4-3 structure, which is not necessarily what the Lions are all the time, they, they vacillate between the two. He can play at or near the line of scrimmage, and so he's got comf he's comfortable dropping out from the line of scrimmage because he's been an inside linebacker for for most of his NFL career. I know he played a a Sam linebacker position in college, and I refer to a Sam as a guy who lines up on the line of scrimmage sometimes, and a guy who lines up at inside linebacker at times. Just a third down late in the game against the Vikings, and here he is. Very similar conceptually to the path that he dropped out on on the game-ending interception against the Bucks, And this one was three weeks prior against the Vikings. Two weeks prior, excuse me, ends up being Cam Sutton's game-sealing interception. Of course, spends a lot of time at inside linebacker, but one reason to have him here more often on rundowns, early downs, is athletically, he's better than the other edge defenders that the Lions have been putting out there opposite Aiden Hutchinson. In terms of running things down from the backside, like you see on this run concept here, away from him. He's got the speed to close down from the backside. Also, the strength, core, and upper body strength to be able to shed and escape from a wide receiver like Jordan Addison trying to get to him from an outside position, which is damn near impossible. Again, not a prototypical pass rusher, and I don't think they're expecting him to do those things. Does have one sack this year. I think when he, if and when he does produce sacks, it'll be of this nature, such that he's the secondary guy who's getting there. Someone else has already disrupted the pass pro, and Derek Barnes benefits from it. This is the um, end zone angle of his only sack of the year, again, against the Falcons. When Aiden Hutchinson seemed to disrupt it from a D-tackle position, and then Barnes benefited from it. Against the Bucks, he's lined up in here. I don't have the end zone angle of this one, but I think he's supposed to set a pick on this stunt. So early in the game, uh, third down, he's definitely veered off towards the right guard, and then no one has touched him, nor did Aleem McNeil try to loop behind. To me, this looks like an attempt by Barnes to pick the right guard so that Aleem McNeil can loop underneath as the second guy as it stands, Baker Mayfield gets rid of the ball quickly. So he, you know, he wouldn't have got Aleem McNeil wouldn't have got there. Uh, perhaps Derek Barnes would have, but when you're told to screen or pick someone, that's what your first step is gonna do. Perhaps it made him a, a split second later getting to Baker Mayfield in this case. But to me, he's a guy who is unselfish. He does what he's asked to do. One thing I have thought for a couple of years since I started covering the Lions in, in late mid-season, late season 2022, is that he plays downhill. What Sometimes you're wrong on that, particularly on play action, but physical tackle against Justin Fields here uh, to the boundary on this quarterback sweep. I love how he's able to shed or evade the blocker on this play. He's not, he sees the football and just goes. He's not trying to get hands on the offensive lineman and win to a particular side 
or win to be able to win to both sides. He's just decisive. And I think that's with his downhill nature as an inside linebacker. Some inside linebackers, Jack Campbell's a little more patient. He'll move one side or the other and then match the running back based on the gap that the running back chooses. Derek Barnes is a little more, bit more downhill. Sometimes it's good to have one of each on the field, to be honest with you, because one guy, the, the more patient side-to-side -side player, can overlap the other one if he's wrong. Against the Bucks again, Barnes is here. you got Pascal in this four-eye. Brian Branch going to blitz off the edge, off screen for us. We don't see it right now. And blocking scheme-wise, it works out perfect because Branch forces it inside, really makes first contact, and then Barnes fits inside of the four-eye, inside the A-gap, basically, since the guard stepped out to Pascal, and it's a combined tackle for loss by Branch and Barnes. Earlier in the season against the Packers, another example, if you ask me, of him fitting downhill, coming downhill now, They, have, they certainly have a really good inside linebacker group at this point, absent Justin or James Houston the fourth. You don't have another edge rusher for pass rush situations that's going to win consistently, or that theoretically could give you eight or ten sacks in a season. You just don't have that guy right now. On rundowns, I think having early downs, excuse me, Campbell, Anzalone, and Barnes in the games in the game at the same time gives. Gives the Lions, gives Aaron Glenn the opportunity to, if the formation changes like this one does here out of 12 personnel, drop the Sam linebacker out of there. Now, maybe they're not referring to him as the Sam. The only problem is when you have someone like Derek Barnes covering out in the curl flat area, there, there's more athleticism required to cover curl flat than there is hook to curl. Hook to curl being basically on the hash or just outside of the hash conceptually. It's a rough example of it. I don't think that Barnes coverage skills are meant to be in the curl flat area unless it's to the boundary out of a cover three. All right, so V play of the game for Derek Barnes. I think it shows, number one, what Aaron Glenn's going to go to in moments of high stress or high leverage for the defense. And number two, what Derek Barnes is capable of if you're lining him up at outside linebacker often enough. Now, this is to the boundary, which doesn't surprise me. You've got Jalen Rees-Mabin pushing to the field, uh, Melifonwu, for whatever reason, coming downhill and then getting depth again. But to the backside of this, Barnes is tracking the tight end intentionally to stay inside leverage of him. Watch what he does off the snap. I'll let this run a couple of times. He turns and runs with two. So he turns and runs with him for a moment to stay on his inside hip. If two had gone out, if the tight end had gone out immediately, he would have looked for one coming in. That's conceptually what you're going to teach people, number one, and number two, what you're going to react to in this drill that I've seen done uh, hundreds of times. Now, I haven't seen hundreds of these interceptions, though. It's great leverage by Barnes to be inside. You can imagine if he's outside of two there, two being the tight end, then it's going to be a far easier completion uh, for Baker Mayfield to get this off. From the end zone angle, you'll see the stunt in these high leverage moments. I think this is what you're going to get out of Aaron Glenn. You're going to get some type of stunt. Kaminsky is bringing heat. And again, this is Aiden Hutchinson, not part of the rush at all. I think what they have done is they have got the Bucks to put the running back to Hutchinson's side and then tried to bring the stunt away from him. And in terms of actually getting to the quarterback, it works because of Kaminsky's effort. And neither Anzalone nor Branch is able to get there because their left guard, first of all, takes Anzalone, and then the running back collisions Branch. But Kaminsky's effort, I thought Kaminsky played really well the other day, and this interception, for my money at least this year, is one of the best ones I've seen out of all the games that I've watched, and of course I've watched every Ravens game and every Lions game in the regular season and the preseason, brilliant play from Derek Barnes. I think his first career interception, but you don't do something like that unless you've been drilled on it, unless you've made that catch hundreds of times in practice, and the pass drop that he took was exquisite. Inside leverage of two, and then turning to look at the quarterback such that the ball isn't thrown over his head like a Tampa 2 type situation, which is not what that was. I think that's what you're going to get out of Aaron Glenn and Dan Campbell in the defense in some of these moments where they need a stop and it's an obvious passing situation. You're going to get that delayed blitz, staggered blitz, one-two with the staccato timing, 
and or you're going to get a nickel blitz off the edge and some type of rotation coverage. I think that that's a sound move. I would not suggest, though, bringing six and playing cover zero in those situations. I'd spent significant time in the reaction video talking about that and criticizing it. Imagine that situation you just saw right there. If you're in cover zero, yeah, you might get to Baker Mayfield, but you may give up a big play as well. In this case, a smart tactical decision, I think, was made, and it's made possible because you have a versatile guy at outside linebacker slash D end and Derek Barnes there who can drop out and be in the right position in terms of leverage.